Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey, Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back. So this is episode one of the Scenery Playlist. That's right, it's finally time to get started. So, you know, uh, made the conscious decision after last operating session that we're gonna get started on scenery. Um, I've ordered all my supplies. They've come in and it's time to get ready to get started. I'm um, very excited because, you know, it's the next step in the, uh, the process here for this layout. Also, you know, I really enjoy doing scenery. I like doing the buildings. I like doing the, uh, the terrain and, and, and all the, uh, the, the uh, trees and, and shrubs and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to getting started with that. It's also going to be a little more less stressful, I believe, because, you know, doing track work and electrical and, you know, um, soldering, it's, it's just, it's, it's very, you know, a lot of work going on. So you know, I can kind of slow down now a little bit and we can just do little sections at a time and move on throughout the layout. So the plan for this playlist is this is how the scenery is going to work out. We're going to start in Sayreville and we're going to work south through the layout all the way back down to Lakehurst and ending in Tom's River. Now, how long is it going to take? I don't know. I'm not going to put any kind of time frame on it. Uh, I, I have certain goals in mind of I want to be to this point by, say, the fall. I want to be there by this point by Christmas. You know, that kind of uh, milestones. But I'm not really going to get into dates and stuff like that because it's, 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 I'm looking at this as the relaxation point of the layout because I enjoy it that much. So it's just going to, we're going to step back and we're going to take it one, one section at a time. Now there's so many facets of the scenery uh, portion to go over that I'm not going to try and jam every video with every little um, point of the scenery. Um, I'm not going to you know over inundate you with too much information. So what my plan is for this episode here is we're going to work on Sayreville. Now the two topics that I'm going to try and focus on this uh, video is how to do the subterrain and um, also maybe a little bit of the painting of the backdrop with the with the clouds. And then the next session that we're together, I'll go over another topic. And we'll just try to pinpoint one or two topics to kind of focus in on throughout the video. But you know, I'm still going to show you the rest of the progress, even though I'm not talking about doing the track work this set, um, this video. I'm you're going to see it go on, but we're just going to kind of just nonchalantly go go over that. Now the whole thing is I'm going to be doing two different uh, subterrain um, types on the layout. In certain spots I want to do the um, cardboard web with plaster gauze over top because there's a lot of um, interference, there's electronics and stuff underneath that I don't want to you know, kind of seal in. So if I got to do any kind of maintenance, they're still readily accessible. Also over by the helix. Um, you know. Let me, let me just digress real quick. We are going to be focusing on Sayreville, but I'm going to take the subterrain out over the helix into the engine facility. But we're not going to really focus on the engine facility yet. I just I want to get that subterrain there to protect the locomotive. So if there's a derailment, so that's kind of you're going to see me stretch it into the facility. But we're going to come back to that. So this video I'm going to kind of break it up where you know in Sayreville we're going to be focused on subterrain, the uh, backdrop, and then painting and weathering the track. And uh, next video we'll be doing uh, structures, and uh, you know, and we'll take it on from uh, in, in the process from there. Um, you know, I, the plan here for this playlist is I'm not going to be doing too many structures, like actual builds and assemblies. Um, I will put them together and we'll overview them. You know, briefly, I'll show you what I did. Um, the other thing is I'm kind of the kind of person that I don't build my buildings on my bench and paint them and weather them and then put them in the scene. I want to put the buildings into the scene and then weather them so I can get the overall idea of the scene so it all blends together. So that's kind of how I'm going to work it. Um, so it's going to be a little tricky, you know, if I want to do airbrushing, so I got to kind of work that somehow. Either maybe pre -do, do some airbrushing at the, at the booth and then put the rest up and then finish up with a little, uh, you know, with some weathering powders and all that. But you know, you'll see that come together as we go. We're now I'm kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but um, but that's how you can expect the playlist to go. You know, maybe two, maybe like three to four or five videos per section as we progress along uh, throughout the layout. Uh, we're gonna do Sayreville, then we'll go to the Browns Yard, including the engine terminal, and then that should take us out to like the fall, late fall, early winter. Then I'm going to get started on the uh, Amboy Secondary uh, down into Dayton. That's that section in the other room. And 
because I need to get that done to tie it in because I don't want to build the scenery here. I want to get that track work running out into there and then we'll progress on down the line. So that's what you can expect on the video. Also, and I'm going to throw it out there right now. Um, we started an Instagram account, uh, Central Jersey Conrail in scale. So throw in the hashtag and go check it out. Um, it's also linked to the Facebook page. I'm going to be posting all kinds of pictures of step-by-step -step process of, you know, you know, today I did this and this is what the changes look like. So you can kind of follow along the changes in those albums that I've already started. And, you know, so the, you look at the Cerebral album and you'll see the pictures as it's progressing. So if you uh, have an Instagram account, go check it out. Uh, you know, follow us and look for the daily updates. If you're a Facebook uh, subscriber, uh, look out for all those changes. And uh, like I said, it's very exciting for me and I'm getting uh, ready to go. So um, that's all I have for you right now. Um, I'm going to go get changed. We're gonna get to work and uh, so why don't you watch the video and I'll talk to you after. Thanks. Okay, so here we are getting started. Um, we're gonna be using a lightweight uh, scenery technique or also known as skeleton technique. Um, the first thing what we do is we're gonna start with some cardboard strips um, and line them up to make a web. So here I am, I'm just using some uh, low temperature hot glue to uh, glue them to the underside of the sub road bed. And then I'll also attach them to the uh, fascia board. Now these cardboard strips, you can either make them yourself, you know, get your cardboard out of your recycling can and, and cut them up. Or I bought mine in a box from uh, Micromart. Uh, they come pre-cut uh, and all you got to do is separate them and you're ready to go. Now as you're working here, you know, keep in mind the general uh, landforms that you want to make. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact because you can correct it as you go and also you can correct it with each layer of gauze and then a third and final when you put your layer of sculptal mold on. Now the one tool I did buy for this was this plier type stapler. It just makes it go a lot easier when you have to staple in between the grid. Um, and then this scene here now what I've done is I've alternately woven the uh, strip of cardboard over the others and then I staple them in each intersection. Now don't forget, you know, we're not supporting a whole lot of weight here so you don't have to worry about it being super strong. It'll have a little bit of give but it will be fairly rigid once you get it glued and then stapled together. It all works as a system together. Now, as you notice, as I'm working here, I am trying to use up all my waste. I don't want to just waste this stuff. You can splice them together by laying the ends over and then stapling it. So uh, that's another way of saving materials as you go. So work in a systematic approach. You know, pick your start point and just keep going. And if you notice, I'm not bouncing around. I'm just going so I don't miss anything. And, and it just works smoother that way and just take your time. Now you notice I'm working mainly here in the Saraville area, but later on you'll see that I actually pushed the webbing into the uh, engine facility over there in Am South Amboy, uh, but we'll cover that in another video. Uh, I just wanted to, why I had the material, I wanted to keep going, and mainly because I'm worried during operating sessions I didn't want locomotives falling down the helix, so that's mainly why I took the opportunity now to get it done. Now on this side, I'm attaching it to the backdrop and then I'm gluing it under the uh, sub road bed. Just make sure you pick a point that's a little lower on the backdrop than what you imagine because you don't want it to bow up. You can always build the area up along the backdrop. So, but once you build it up and if it's too high, it's a little harder to bring it back down. So that's why I'm picking those points that will look a little low. So now at this point, you. Um, Sayreville was mainly flat because it's kind of a river delta. It's very sandy, not very much relief. Um, so that's why everything's just generally there's not a lot of landforms. Um, you know, so that's just part of the model rarity experience is you got to pick your geology as you go and understand the lay of the land.
Okay, so now we're gonna get started laying the plaster gauze. Uh, I got my plaster gauze from Scenic Express in uh, rolls. Um, then what I do is I spread them out and I cut them into like eh, four or six inch squares. Uh, I use that paint tray to just stack them up and I use a, a bucket of water. I just dunk them in, shake it off real quick because you don't want it sopping wet and then just lay it across the cardboard. Now I generally like to do two layers of gauze. Uh, the first layer really just builds up the uh, the base. Um, work in a, in a pattern. If you find that a piece of gauze kind of falls through the hole, you know, work around that hole and then lay a piece on top of the hole to cover it, and then come back later. I just took some tips from some people uh, that to cover my track with the uh, painter's tape and that's just to keep the the plaster gauze dripping onto the track and making a mess and have you know making too much cleanup for later this area here is a good example where there was a hole and it kept falling through so I'm just working around it and coming back to cover the hole last Now where the gauze comes up to the back of the backdrop, I like to curl it up and then flatten it out on the back of the backdrop. I'm not too worried about this area down low because that'll be covered by scenery or buildings, uh, but you generally don't want it to come up too high because then it'll obscure everything. The main thing here is you want to avoid having a gap between the scenery and the backdrop because then it just has that problem with stuff falling through and you got to fix it at a later uh, time. So you notice every so often I'll put a bunch of gauze down, let it set up just a little bit so it gets a little rigid, wet my hands and I go back and flatten out the edges and that keeps the edges from curling up. Also you notice right in that little gully there uh, uh, by the track there's some edges that are kind of like like a hole in there. I'm not worried about that right now because we're gonna, when they do the second layer that'll cover over that area. So once you get the hang of it and you get your your system down it, it, it's actually very relaxing and enjoying so what I'll do I'll just be quiet for a minute and let you watch. So at this point, a lot of you are probably out there watching and asking, why did I choose this scenery method in this area? And the main thing was there's a lot of um, electronics and switch machines and stuff underneath, and I didn't want to build the area up with pink scenic foam and then carve it because I didn't want it to be in the way of all that electronics underneath. I thought by doing the grid method, it kept everything up high and left that area underneath open, so if I have to do any maintenance. So you can see here, this is that area, that, one of those areas that has the, the hole that I can't get the piece to lay in right, so I'm just going to work around it and come back. The other thing is I put too much tape so I keep trimming it uh, so I can get that gauze. I want to lay it right up on the sub road bed so it resolves that issue where the sub road bed's too high and the grid is too low, so I'm just using that to my advantage. So 
So for right now, what I'm doing is I'm laying the gauze right over the edge of the fascia board. Um, and then once it dries real good for a couple days, I'm going to come back with a sharp hobby knife and trim it to the edge of the, uh, the fascia board. Uh, in this area, it looks like the scenery is going to be above the level of the fascia. So right there, that's an example of one of those little area, those holes. Uh, so now that the gauze is set up and it's got a little strength, I've been able to resolve that and cover over it and uh, work it. And so now it's looking much better. So that's the first layer. Now I'm going to get right into doing the second layer. Uh, the second layer, you know, helps resolve those little areas that you're not too happy with. Uh, they may be a little low. Um, it also some of the edges may be curling up and it helps you lay it back down um, this in this layer you want to concentrate on smoothing it and getting your hand wet and rubbing it all together and getting that plaster to blend into that other layer so it doesn't separate and also it fills in those edges and makes it look more smooth and so that's how we did the subterrain here in Sayreville So now we're going to get started painting on a backdrop. Um, you can see that uh, I've already done a couple clouds. Uh, I watched a bunch of videos um, and read a lot of articles on doing clouds. The stencil method I found was too harsh of an edge. Um, and you can see they look very cartoonish. Uh, almost uh, some people were saying it looks like a nursery. But if you notice this cloud here, this is kind of where I got the hang of it. I just freehand draw the shape in. Fit, fill it in and then use the stencils to kind of make some shadowing and edges um, and it kind of comes together here as the more as we go The other thing I kept in mind was a lot of the videos I watched, they were making these super detailed clouds and I didn't want a very photorealistic cloud because I didn't want it to take away from the atmosphere of the, the the scenery and the structures and the trains uh, I kind of wanted the clouds just to be there but I wanted to look good I didn't want them to look like cartoons the big thing when you're painting the clouds is you want the highlights up top then you want to use um, a little gray on the bottom to make that shadowing and also bring that shadowing up into the cloud um, all I did here is I took a cup of white and added one drop of black and it kind of made that that dark gray or that darker color on the bottom. Then once I get the gray in, I go back with more white, put in some more highlights, put in some more streaks and kind of blend that gray in so it's not as harsh. So let me say this, at this point I'm not really sure if I'm liking the whole cloud thing. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's enough, it does, I'm not sure. So I went to Facebook and I put it out there and a lot of people did not like it. And I was like, well, um, how can I fix this? It was either repaint it and just go with the haze, because you see I'm putting the haze effect in. Um, or should I, what can I do to fix it? So then I, I just kind of went down there and I forgot to turn the camera on and I said, hey, let me just blend them all together and make a giant formation of clouds. And that's when it really started to take shape and I like it. So the moral of the story is bigger is better. Look at the pictures of the clouds. They're huge formations and they take up the whole sky. So as you can see, it looks so much better with just a giant cloud formation of the little clouds. And I think it came out so much better and I re really like it now. Now, I don't think I'm gonna do clouds throughout the room. I think I'm just gonna pick certain areas to have big groups of clouds. I apologize they didn't get more uh, video footage of me building this cloud formation. Uh, at a later date, we're going to do more, and I'll make sure to 
uh, get more footage. Now the techniques were all the same, we just blended them all together. So I've gotten a lot of uh, critique about the gaps in the track. Um, and a lot of people who watch my videos didn't quite understand what was going to happen. So here I'm fixing that. So to all the naysayers uh, who mocked my track work, uh, yeah, I'm, it's going to look much better now. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm using Fast Track's wooden ties and inserting them into those gaps to fill it in and make it look more uniform. And uh, it actually hides the rail joiners too, so it makes it look much better. The other thing, I got a lot of questions on why I was throwing away all those good plastic ties. Why wasn't I keeping those uh, to fill in the gaps? And, you know, because when I'm doing track work, those things are flying all over the place. And, you know, there's actually a lot of uh, pre-work that you have to do with those ties. You have to cut them up. You have to file them down. And it's kind of tedious. Um, so I actually saw this technique on a video where they were just using these fast tracks uh, wooden ties to slide in. And let me tell you, so much easier. Uh, you don't have to do any prep work. The... The spacing is, or the, the width of them is perfect. It slides right under the rail. It doesn't push the rail up. And the effect is perfect. So I'm very happy that I chose to go this route. And uh, you'll see in the end, after we weather the track, it looks really good. It So here we are getting started weathering the track. I'm using AccuFlex Rail Brown and, and I'm just spraying. Now I apologize we didn't have more footage. Um, my airbrush was giving me a lot of trouble that day. Uh, so I, we will revisit this at a later time. So I got a recommendation to not bother staining the ties and just use the paint to cover it. The, uh, I'm not too happy with that because it's not dark enough. So in the future I'm going to stain the, tr the ties. And so that puts a wrap on our first layer of scenery. Okay, so there you go. Uh, that's how we did it. Um, yeah, so very happy uh, getting scenery going, uh, getting the creative juices flowing. Uh, very happy with the way it's coming out. Um, you know, uh, we got our base level subterrain down. Uh, we did the clouds. Um, now, you know, I kind of briefly went over that, um, but it was a big learning experience. And as you can see over my shoulder here, um, very, very happy with the way the final outcome. And uh, I think that was definitely a learning experience. I thank everybody for all their creative uh, input. And, uh, you know, my wife said later, she's like, those people are being so mean to you. And I said, you know what? Well, that's why I did it. I did, that's why I put it out there because I don't want to be babied. You know, tell me when I'm doing something that looks bad. And because uh, otherwise, if I didn't have that input, I would have I would have dealt with it and just let it be. But, you know, everybody pushed me to do it better. And, and yeah. I'm so much happier with the way it looks. I mean, just even looking at it in the viewfinder of the camera, it looks pretty good. Um, you know, I will finish up over here and kind of just stretch that cloud around the corner so it kind of resolves itself and makes a little more sense. But, um, you know, when we get uh, over to the uh, engine facility, I'll show you how we wrap up that cloud and uh, we can concentrate more on the actual techniques of doing it. So, you know, I said I did a lot of research, watch a lot of videos, a lot of Bob Ross videos, uh, a lot of other people out there doing some really crazy stuff with clouds. Uh, the one video that I found just so, um, so productive and just gave me so much information was uh, the Airbrush Tutor. A uh, gentleman out of Australia, uh, phenomenal artist with an airbrush. So thank you very much, uh, sir. Uh, you taught me a lot and uh, made me pull this off. So I'm very happy. And uh, we'll, uh, like I said, we'll go over more of those techniques that I picked up uh, at a later point. So then um, the other thing was we also uh, got, got to work uh, doing some of the track work and doing some of the weathering on my airbrush sort of give me fits. I, I somehow must have bent the needle at some point. So I put a new needle in. Of course, it's a, uh, it's, it's a medium needle. So I got to go buy a new fine needle. So uh, that's why that didn't really focus too much on that video there. But um, so we'll get to that uh, at, a, at another video.
And so that's about it. Um, now I'm going to wrap this video uh, editing up and get this posted to you. Uh, actually, I'm pretty excited. Today's Thursday. I'm going to wrap this video edit up here. I'm going to have it posted up uh, Thursday night. Um, I usually do my posts on Friday, but I'm pretty excited the way this video is coming out. So I want to get it out to you as soon as possible. And um, otherwise, that's all I have for you. So if you like this video and you're watching it for the first time, please subscribe to our channel because we got a lot more great videos of this stuff coming out. So uh, make sure you follow along so you can follow the progress on our layout. It's coming out really well. Um, if you like the video, uh, give me your thumbs up. And hey, you know what? If you didn't like it, tell me why. You know, make me better. Because, uh, you know, the people out there that, that, that are just giving me the negative comments, um, you're making me a better person. So I thank you too. And uh, make sure you check us out on Facebook and uh, follow our new Instagram account because uh, we're going to be posting, I'm putting pics up every day of all the progress. I already, uh, over my shoulder here, I got some uh, buildings already started, so I'm going to be posting some pics up tomorrow. And uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.